Hi everyone, welcome back into the studio. This is part two of the the Western painting I call Coffee Break, and uh, let's get going. Now it's been it's been actually a couple of days. I was going to continue on, then you know life gets in the way, and so I had to stop. But uh, now we're back and we're ready to go. And one of the things I did here, which I really kind of like, is I went and, and uh, got some cows and I uh, put some in there. I found a couple of photos I like. One of them is right here that has this particular cow so I'm going to put that cow in there and all this is is burnt sienna a little bit of a, a tiny touch of the of the green the pine green which helps gray that burnt sienna up and then you can add white and when you add white you should add a little yellow oxide like I told you before to do the light part and down here and I just I just poster blocked it in like I've told you before um, you take some of this gray a little bit more green into it and you can make the size maybe even a touch of the blue from the guy's shirt in the sky and and put that on there we'll paint some more of it a little bit later on in the video we'll uh, work on these cows a little bit more but I just kind of blocked them in and back here I just set some some shapes and so it kind of fills in and I like this his head looking back this way which stops your eye from coming this side and kind of and kind of brings you back in this direction here so so that'll work and as we develop this horse that'll work there too let's go right in oh and I did put just a little bit more on his hat and one more coat of this lighter uh, blue violet right onto his shirt taking out just a touch more of that blue brighter blue and um, get it a little closer to what I like okay so let's get in and let's work some of the the horse and stuff so when we last left we were blocking these areas in and uh, now I want to come in and I really want to build up some paint and I want to get it you know a little thicker so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-mix up some horse color here some of the uh, Burnt sienna, some green. This makes beautiful that grayer tone here. We'll lighten some of this up up here like this because remember we're lightening the horse. We're going to lighten the horse a little more than um, what we see in the photo. I want, I want her a little lighter. And so I'll push that maybe right around, uh, what is this, about a value six? Yeah, it's about a value six or so. And then we'll look at that, what that is going to be on her. So you, as you can see, is I'm going to go a little bit lighter. Now, remember, it's going to dry down. So this might go down to a five or so uh, right in there. And I can make some variations here, maybe a little red, some yellow over here. This is just beautiful color. You can mix in a little open medium, which will help the color stay uh, wet. It will also help the color stay thicker, which is what I want to do. So see, here's another another tone in there. You can gray the tone down here a bit, and you know maybe a little darker, a little grayer tone over here, which is great for shadows. And again, add a little open medium to this. And the reason why I'm you know you don't see me pre-mix like this quite you know very often, but I'm going to use a lot of paint because I'm going to start really putting in a lot of paint. We can get more, even more gray and darks and stuff here with a little bit of blue, which we want to have uh, into the, some of the deeper shadows and stuff. So I have some nice stuff to work with here. And remember what I said too is increase that yellow as you come out here. So we could have some, even some lighter tones that might hit uh, some areas that will be a little lighter. Uh, and more uh, yellowish uh, kind of tone. Now in the very back, back there, you can kind of see it's over my head there, is I have my board of horses that you've seen me use before in the videos, in the Western paintings. And I just put those out there for color ideas. So I have a lot of bays uh, uh, there and sorrels, which is pretty much pretty close to her color. So I want to, uh, I'll just keep that there. Let's start with some of this dark, and see, sometimes it'll have a little green, so I don't mix it up super, super well. And let's just reinforce this side here. Good dose of paint. This time you're going to get brave with your paint. And this brush might be a little big for what I want to do, but that's all. Yeah, let's go down just a bit here. Um, and I want to, and that's part of the, you know, you start out with as big as brush as possible, right? We said that. In, in just about every video. And then what I want to do is uh, come in and break this up with more and more strokes and more and more strokes, more and more tone. So, uh, and 
you know, sometimes you judge that brush, that big brush, then you start to go down a little smaller, taking smaller marks with more tones, and that just gives you more interest. So, yeah, that big brush was great for the beginning. Now I'm just going to go down again. And let's just put on some of this. Now see how that changes. And I always follow as I put this on and as I start to build. See how the horse is starting to build. This paint lifts her off the surface. Do you see that? Okay. And I kind of follow all of the directions. Like she's going to have that muscle we built up there. Let's go in here to some of our light tone. And let's just drop some real light right up onto that muscle there. Because it's going to be lighter, right? We're going to be lighter. Don't worry about it. And then we'll come in with a little bit darker on either side of that. That is called the half tone, the half tone mark. And then down, dropping down a little bit darker here to, to get some of that muscular structure right there. And then a real deep, darker shadow up underneath. Do you see that real dark shadow there right up underneath here? So a little bit of blue into your burnt sienna, you get that deep, darker, muscular shadow that helps get that um, big muscle there, right there on the horses. And we'll put it back to a little more light right here, back down onto her leg, okay? And then I'll refine some of that. So I'll come back in here, maybe take another little mark, or right in between these two, I make what is called another little half tone right in here, and I'll strike that right there. See how that's just a little softer exchange. You can also take your finger like I like to do and, and blur out, but I like to leave the marks. Now, this, what is important about this here when you're deciding on some of these marks is it is very important, and I haven't stressed it too much in the last couple of Westerns, but I, I try to stress it all the time, is you get up, get back, and take a look at it. I like to paint stuff for about eight feet, and when you see me looking at the monitors, like I'm looking at a monitor right here, the camera is back over my shoulder here about eight feet. So I can look at that monitor, and I can see what it is, because you don't want me running up and jumping in and taking a look at it all the time. But I can see what that looks like. And I like it to hang when we hang it up in, on display. I like it to uh, be able to have stroke interest, color interest, movement interest at eight feet, which means I'll leave a little bit of difference between some of these marks and I won't blend them out so much. So that gives me more difference or more interest. So see, I'll leave a few marks in here and maybe just some of our burnt sienna out here too. Just real good, pretty colors. Working some of those tones in there, see? I'm looking for this subtle changing of some of those tones. And that's where she's going to get the most interest as you build. And lots and lots of paint here as we build this here. So a little bit more light, warm color on that mark. And see, I took it a little different direction than I did before. Let's put a softer little tone right up by that shadow there. And so if I decide that shadow, ooh, that mark might be too much, I'll just start to soften it out until I get a, you know. And you can put in little half tones until you get some rounding of the tones there as well. Now, I like that light on there. I should carry it maybe someplace else. So let's just push a little bit more right here, right up there, maybe a touch, it's a little isolated, so maybe a touch of it right back up here where the light would be hitting her, since our light is coming from the upper top, and you can see a little bit of light there, so we'll drop that right in there, so this is how we uh, will come through and base this in yeah, and see, so now she, you can see that whole leg, that whole unit, her whole area there is coming forward a little bit more. And uh, we'll build this muscle up just a touch more, right up to that shadow there. Some of this right down here. Nice. And, you know, I'll, do, I'll generally do this quite a few times as I start to build the horse. Let's bring some of this forward. Now, we're going to lighten her up. So some of these colors, some of this color right in here. Let's just look at this forward big shoulder unit right here. And let's lighten that up a bit. 
Lots of paint. See, I'm just going to plow on some paint here. Get brave with putting on some texture and some paint right there. And uh, I went to my bigger brush so I can put on a lot of paint real quick. Okay, so I got some paint in there. Let's bring down this shoulder stroke here. Maybe right down here, we'll pull some down. Nice big movement, because that's that big flat forward, forward shoulder there. And uh, some other color right down here. And I'll tend to, uh, I'm using my big brush right now because it's a big area on her so I can use this and still get away with lots of the, the tonal interest and stuff that I want to have here. Uh, maybe, maybe some of this back up through here a bit more so that travels through her a touch more. That looks better. See, it, it's, I don't want it to be spotted, so I want it to travel through her up into that tinier little light. And sometimes when you're building a lot of paint, you let it kind of tack up a bit and you can get some more uh, textures or interest or more paint on it if you just come back after a few minutes as it starts to tack. All right, let's build this shoulder a bit more here, right down this side, right here, pull that down. Pull some of this color down. She goes into shadow there, so let's go to our darker side here. Right up here and pull some shadow down. Move some of that color around. Some shadow down here. We'll grab some light here, right down here. And then back into a little bit of shadow as it goes into that muscle, that shape of that muscle there. And this is where I'll go to my smaller brush and push in some of that shadow, shaping the muscle, the rounding of the muscle there, down the leg, okay? That big uh, shadow comes up here because this is a big forward muscle right here. So that's gonna come up here and I'll just redirect some of that light and I don't worry about it, you know, going back and forth. So I'll look at this and I'll put a half tone in there. See how easy that is to direct it, you know, to, and we'll build this up. So I got that shadow of that muscular structure there and I'll just build on it. There's big flat right here. So I'll reset set that shadow there, right there. Even darker yet back up over to this side. And see, it's more paint. You can see I'm using more paint. We'll blur off just a bit. More paint, and it's building the horse. See how the horse, especially as you look at the paint. Now, these are some of the colors and stuff I use on those cows, but look at how she is coming forward, and that is all because we're giving more depth, more paint to what we're doing here. Let's put a little bit more right out here, then we'll drop down. This is how I love to paint them. But see, I haven't added all the colors I can have because out here you have your violets. And we can go with a little bit of violet here, here as well, because violets look good into some of the deeper shadows. Even violet and some of that um, darker tone here, see? A little bit of violet, that's a, it's a pretty tone. And the blues, the compliment, blue is just about a compliment here to, you know, what we're doing on the horse. So see how that, that just changes some of that nice intensity and the, and the uh, um, just the, the pow, the contrast of that color. So let's get this a little darker, a little more blue, maybe a little bit of violet into that. Deeper, darker, cooler color right in there. Pull that down that back leg. Right down like that. Maybe some of that right up over here, which shows that big muscle. And then it allows this front chest muscle, which will start right here. We'll, we'll be able to build this front chest muscle here. Right in there. All right, right in there. A little bit more paint right in there. Head down to your shadow, soften it out a bit, right down in there. But then I, I get a little mark for that big chest muscle there. Does that make sense? 
and we can build this up a bit more this side plane muscle here there a little bit of shadow so shadow goes into the deep part there let's get some of this blue and violet deep or dark get rid of some of that and we'll pull down for her main stroke there right in there and you can have a a bit of the burnt darker burnt sienna in there just to warm up some of that and give a bit of interest but that works let's push a little more dark sometimes i'll add if I feel the paint starts to get a little sticky, or does it, or if I want to just kind of do this, this is called scumbling it in, working the brush, just kind of brush sketching, working it in, looking at filling in and removing some of the, uh, what we call holidays, the empty spots of the paint. I'll thin out the paint and just kind of scumble, just kind of work it in like that so I don't create a hard line that uh, especially on a back edge like that that's receding we don't want to create a hard line there so let's go a little bit of light slightly different not quite as yellow and let's look right into here and build that that might be too light we'll take it down just a bit work that in there there we go and right through here. There we go. Yeah, and I, I, there's a, that muscular shadow could come up. Remember that V that we put in here? And so we can bring that muscular V right back up in there again, because that does happen on their leg there. Okay, and uh, that would round down this way. So I'll just come in here with a half tone. Here a little bit more burnt sienna that will help that rounding down there. And that big chest muscle here again, build that up. And see, mostly what I'm doing is going back and forth. And what am I doing? I'm building paint, building and building paint. And so as I put a structure on, I can soften it and change it, change some of the movement on it. But uh, yeah, I'm concentrating on building that structure. And when it comes, I'll put that, that brush aside for a second. And when it comes to these big chest muscles and stuff here, I like to take, you know, big strokes of paint. And that, or not chest muscle, this side plane, this right here. I like to take these big strokes of paint because that really gives the flat feeling to that that horse's muscle right there and then i can take like this would be a good place for burnt sienna to round down just a bit right up towards that v and reshape that v but each time i'm doing this i'm building a little more and a little more paint building and building repeating and building and that's what gives you the interest to your painting so we'll take that little bit of light right there and we'll just poke that in. Let's put a little half tone next to it, a little burnt sienna right there. And then back over to our shadow. Restate that in. And you can see how that softens it with just a few strokes of that color. Let's restate that light right in here again, right down here. Just restate that light there. That's good. So, and on the horse that we have in our sample, this not only has this V that's more defined right here, but that, that one tracking line, because probably because her head's turned here slightly, comes up with the shadow right up here a little bit. So you want to color just a little bit darker, and then you want to bring the light back here right down through here like that and you'll create that little fold there in her musculature there there we go build that up let's just take some of that up towards the main okay there we go 
And then one of the things I started doing the last few years, let me just make a little different color here, a little red in it too, is I'll start to add other smaller little marks and tone or strokes like here. So this has a little bit of red in it that, you know, there it's a subtle change in the hue that helps me add a little more structure and stuff to them. So like this little stroke would look good right here, right between, sitting right between there. I can bring back out that light right there a bit more, but that it's a tiny bit of more red in it. And this is where you get even more interest. And, and this is what separates like a master's painting from just a really nice painting is that you spend more time pushing on some of these other subtle little tones. And that takes time and that takes energy. And so it's and so it's how much do you put into your painting? And if I have the time, I like to do it. That's one of my favorite things to do is to push on multiple tones. So I'll push that on and a little bit of that reddish tone might come in there just to break up some of that there. See how now see how much more interest that has down through there? You know, and we can redefine the shadow that comes right down in there again soften out that edge maybe a bit there yeah and down so and you know how much you like I always say how much you do is up to you I'm just gonna push a little bit of this light onto her leg there and uh, I'll let most of that real deep shadow maybe towards this violet and stuff here just sit right here as a because her forward chest is so heavy and we'll just let that sit right in there that's pretty good and let's pull maybe even more burnt sienna right down here and just and I like to push to do what I call incorporate the colors not to blend the colors but to incorporate the colors so I get that incorporation. And then you might want to, you know, take some of this and pull this direction, which sets that flat motion of that chest there. And, you know, towards the end, as I got the values right, then I start looking for some of the, the marks, the directions of the marks that I'll make that will set the shape in each one of those areas. So, and I like to do that. Let's explore put out just a little bit of light right here there we go and so you can see I went this way then I went that way and then this one kind of pulled down just a bit see and I get more of that modeled light through here so sometimes you know it's like okay you, you don't want to always pull exactly 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 the same direction like I'll set it and then I'll pull one right down through here that sets that other motion Does that make sense and so I get this, and what happens is you get this modeling back and forth here that uh, actually gives a lot more shape, a lot more interest, the musculature to her here. There we go. Like that. There. There we go. Just like that. And some really dark tones in here right up here I'm going to restate this look at that and bring this back just a bit more darker and see I had that little bit of violet in there that looks really good in there with that violet and this dark here let's pull that back just a bit more there sets more of the flat of her chest there with that that's good. Now, I'm going to um, take some of this yellow, maybe a little light yellow, dirty here, and let's get rid of these holidays right here and soften some of the back. And I'm just going to blur this out, soften some of the back structure here. And let's take a little yellow and green. That'll... that'll uh, stop some of the oranginess to it here and I'll just work this color in maybe a little bit into her edge here so we soften that back edge 
so she recedes a bit here like that um, let me just take I'll rinse out my brush here and just scumble this over like this and I want to I want to keep this back edge of her here even though we got to put on you know the the chest strap and stuff that'll keep her a little softer here a little bit here doesn't need to be perfect here, but get a little more paint. Everything up in here is all dependent upon your paint. Get that paint in there. And we don't want to lose all our shadow we did, but see, I'll put more paint in here. Create that. Let's get a bit of that shadow back in here. Bit of blue, bit of green bit more shadow and see this is and it's slightly different tone than I used before that is the most important thing that I've learned I think in in painting the westerns and stuff like this is I don't repeat the same colors I used in the last time because each time you repeat it you just start to make it flatter and flatter so don't repeat it use a slightly different tone here and we'll build this front area up here with more paint. And look what happens. She starts to come even farther forward. So, and that's really, really good. Now, there should be a little bit of a notch. It is in the drawing. And I see it right up there better. But it, So it comes back here right like that before it goes down to her leg. Down her leg. And that's really kind of important for the structure here her anatomy there. So we'll put that in. Then we'll work in some shadow. Get that correct. Work in some of the shadow. Take away just a bit of that light there. But there you see that better. Now I can redefine that shadow on that side. A little more violet, a little bit more of my deep color right here. And kind of take that side stroke there. Don't take out all that violet we put in earlier. But that helps, and then blur this edge a bit more. Blur that edge so that, uh, you know, this is a receding edge on the painting. So you don't want it, you don't want a sharp contrast edge. You want it to be receding and heading over there to the shadow. So that works. Let's get some of this out. Some of this yellow here. A little bit up in here maybe a little bit grayer here there we go and put on more paint that works see so that builds her up and then we can um we have a real good shadow here i hadn't finished this rounding shadow right here on her front leg so we'll just walk some of that in there leaving that highlight area there on her leg. Maybe a, a touch of this darker browns right back up in here. So we see it, but it mostly goes down into those shadows, into the darker color. And we'll push a little bit of the darker, especially if she's a good, you know, bay like mine was. She has the, the dun jean of the dark uh, legs, mane, and tail. So we'll push that in a little darker. And right up in through here. So that picks up. And it, see, it's very, very suggestive. I like to keep it kind of suggestive. They're not perfect here. That, that keeps your a, a simplicity to your painting that uh, really shows that it's a more casual use of the shape and the form and it's being more relaxed and it, uh, for me, I mean, it, and it gives a lot of interest in that it's more relaxed and allows the viewer's eye to paint shapes. And they, the viewer's eye can see these shapes too. So, We'll just darken that just a bit. 
just so we say that, yeah, we see it, we've done it here. And let that blur off there. We're gonna put all kinds of nice grasses and stuff up in there. Let's go up so you can see that. Now, I would maybe repeat that again. And then towards the end, you know, of the painting, I might do this. I might, you know, get brave enough here to come in here with my knife. And they see you and you just go, oh, what did you just do? No, it's, you get brave like that, then we'll take some of our other color and we'll start to manipulate this in. This is just good thick color. Now, you know, you can let this dry a bit so you don't, if you don't like it, you can take it back off. But what I like to do is once this paint starts to tack up a bit, I like to go in there pretty aggressive and then start manipulating it like this into the the shape and the form that I like that to be. And that just builds up a bit more of her shape. Do you see that? And maybe I'll push a bit more burnt sienna right here on this side shadow right there. All right? Bit of light right down here on this edge of that plane. And so you can see, look at how much more it builds that front. See, that's the thing. And she will have a cast shadow here down, down her uh, whole front. And I like green, blue, and violet into some of these cast shadows. Maybe that's a little too green, so I'll kill it with a little bit of red, a little bit of the complement. And we'll just pull that cast shadow down here. Drop that down like that. See, now let's build up into the front. And again, I'll use these colors right up here. Let's, let's pull in some of the heavy color that we would see up here. Maybe a little lighter, a little different tone. We'll go a little bit grayer back here. I'm just looking up at the sample here up at the I like to look up at the monitor we'll start to build her up a bit more here okay pull down her main nose a little bit lighter some of that right up on the center part a little bit touches of light this is why I like the small little flat. This is a little number four flat. We can put a little touch of the light and you know, which is gonna be up over that, that large socket there above the eye. And uh, some darker stuff here down this side, okay. And a little bit of this shadow down this side here to finish. That's gonna make our face a little bit wide. So, and you can thin it back down here, anything close to the main color here. You know, blue and red uh, here make a real nice dark as well. More of a grayish dark here. So we can use that right in there to thin out and pull down like the main color there, see? And that helps her face come forward, do you see that? Right? And pull down here. Blur that edge just a bit. There we go. And uh, we'll put some little bits of light right here up underneath. Down the side of her face is more shadow. Down this side, but but pull down thinking the side of her face. So that builds the side of her face there, right? And then into the deep, deep shadow, violet, blue, green, to the real deep shadow down here, up onto her side here, her neck, and then into the cast shadow here. And again, blur that off a bit. 
Okay, and you can see it starts to build her face coming forward. We'll have a few other light strokes here. And I like to always, when I paint the side plane, I always like to pull down slightly because that's what that, that, basically that cheek, that side of the face does, it pulls down. So I like to do that. Here, down like that, there, and a little more light right up here from the flat, right up and right up that line. So you don't want it to go down too much to a point because you got to get the width of that of her face in. Let's get some a beautiful gray, blue, and you can use green and um, the. Burnt Sienna, like we used before, blue and red here also work really, really nice for a nice gray. A little different gray than what we've did, done before. Let's push in some of that gray. Let that work right into that, this gray. Let this gray work right into uh, some of the uh, burnt, or excuse me, the uh, base color of her. And you can tap some of the color through so that the two incorporate. In other words, you have a lot of this gray here and we're gonna build her nostrils up here and stuff, but uh, you can touch into some of the, the bay color, some of the, the burnt sienna color of her and push that in as well. Let's take a darker and right, right across here, we'll pull down slightly. This will make the plane for the front of her face here or front of her her muzzle there and we'll use a little bit more of that dark to create um, a little C shape right here that will create her nostril right there okay and one slightly over here to the other side and we have to put a little bit of light on that other side so it shows up slightly against that mane right there but uh, leave just a bit of that nostril there that's good maybe a little bit of shadow just kind of dance it around there a bit and we'll uh, do a touch more light of the gray pulling down through here maybe touch into that nostril just a bit let it dance through here shines and little bits to of her nose and set some of the light color of her face back into some of that gray let the two incorporate in other words work them back and forth until they start to incorporate they don't blend they incorporate see and I'll work slightly darker let's go more violet and green and blue a little different color Violet, green, and blue. Maybe another little touch of a slightly darker color right there. Maybe um, a bit of that plain, that plain, that. And you know, if I'm really painting a lot of detail and stuff on a horse, I would spend a lot. I spend a lot of time up and around the uh, the nose and the front plane of the horse and really develop it. We're not going to spend that much time here today, but I'll build this little socket color right there above the eye. And as you paint more and more of the horses, you start seeing more and more details. That's what happens here. And um, down below the eye, I'm going to take some gray and some white and just the edge of my brush, and I'll put... It's almost like the lower lid, a little shine on the lower lid because you can't see the eye too much here. Okay, it's dark into dark and it's on a shadow side here. So you can't see too much. So I'll put just a little bit and maybe define, if I get it a little big like I did, I'll push in some more dark into that eye here. Just a bit like that. So the eye is going to stay very soft and very underpainted, if that makes sense. Here, let's put a little bit of gray pulling down this side plane here. And then 
I'll push that back with just a little bit of the light and shadow, get a bit of violet into some of this. Love that violet into the real darks. See, it's a di slightly different tone. There we go. But I love to do that, like I just tap that and then I'll take some of it out and maybe a little bit more lighter gray, see? And I'll leave some of it, but then you get a, a better movement of the colors going in and out of there. Do you see that? Maybe, um, you know, I'd look through the horse and a lot of times you don't see it, but maybe there's a little bit of a light that just hits on the lower part of the lip there. Maybe uh, this comes in right into an inside of a nostril there. And that's a little big, but I won't worry about it. I'll paint it back down here. And uh, here, paint a little shadow into that and push that back. There we go. It's like that, you know. So, yeah, and I think that light there is probably enough. She's actually in, because she has the, the sun in her face, stuff here, she's actually squinting a bit. And so if you take that round part of the eye and put a little more shadow in a line, she'll squint down a bit. But I think we're going to be okay. Here we go. Like that. That big side jaw line there. Maybe uh, just a little bit of that pulling down that side. Because the side of her plane of her face is so large. I'll let that just go there. That's pretty good. Let's take um, some of this color darker and we'll, we'll come back up here and redefine that ear just a bit, a little bit more there. Some of that dark pulling down for uh, what would be her top forelock there. We'll get that in and uh, maybe a little a little bit wider right here on this coming down. Checking the anatomy. Once you get some of that correct here. Now I like that this is a little narrow right there. So see, I just come back and this is where I'll take some of that light, maybe push that over again with another little stroke. You know, and, and, and maybe I might even put a little gray in there or something like that that helps, um, you know, say that or gives that little bit of grayness to it. You know, there's all kinds of ways here. Maybe a little bit more to that light, that front edge. And let's just take a little burnt sienna, some of this dark and draw up that leg a bit. So I like those. I like those especially when I get those strokes and I start building it where I get that strokes. I think I might just because I like that front of that muzzle and the warmness just a bit. Put in a little bit more light, more than what I see in the actual painting just because that's doing nice things for her there, that light. Maybe just a bit more. So it's more than what I see in the painting. But uh, I do kind of like that. And <clears throat> so, yeah, she's got a good look right now to her. Um, this shadow or the, the front part up here can pull down a little bit. Maybe round that just a bit. So that looks pretty good. And then we'll, we'll put her... her uh, her bridle on here and it doesn't have a nose strap so that's easy but um, let's come in and, and again let's work on let's take some of this because this is all good chap colors for the chaps too here some yellow some white some of this greenish color that's right in here and build that chap up a bit more here maybe a touch more green a little bit grayer some light here Put on some more paint, build that up, especially up onto that knee. 
pull it across the leg a bit there like that maybe a touch more light but again I'm using more paint I'm laying on this whole layer everything I'm doing is laying on more paint and for me that's that's the part that really changed my paint I'm going to put a little bit of the horsey color into that that's the part that really changed my painting was more paint so Yeah, more and more paint. Get brave with your paint. There we go. And uh, I like that. Maybe a bit of that horsey color right down there. A little bit more of a shadow. You can see I'm more defined, more paint. Being uh, a little bit sketchy, if you want to say that. You know, using your brush lighter and more sketched. Um, let's put some of that light right down here boom right on the chap maybe a bit of that green comes out a bit more here there but it's that paint that's the ticket that's the get that thicker paint define that knee I because I remember we we did that so that we didn't pull that big long stroke that we saw right in the uh, in the actual painting, we we don't want to pull that too long. And we'll just pull that and bring that across. But we didn't want to pull all the way down because that's a little bit that's a little bit distracting, I think. So I didn't want to do that. So I created the knee. That was my choice. We'll create the knee right there. And a little bit of that chap shadow there bit of that darker shadow up in here here we go just like that let's use a bit of that shadow up here on her some of that maybe a touch of that orange because you see that orange which where did that come from on those chaps up there and uh, then we'll get lighter a little bit of green with that Graze it up. Let's hit that. And nice paint. Put on some paint. Get it nice and thick there. Matter of fact, I'm going to restate this right in here to really set that paint in there. Because you can see it. It, And I'm going to soften that. Don't worry. I haven't lost my mind. I'm going to just tap on some heavy paint. It's hard, you know, for all you that especially beginners, it's hard to go in there and put on that much paint. But your interest comes from that paint, you know, that amount of paint. So don't be afraid of it. Put that paint in there. There we go. Just like that. And maybe... Uh, Stroke here, across, and, and multiple strokes, interest, pulling across different ways. Let's define that shadow a bit more right over here. There we go. Just right up there. I want to get that, I like how, you know, in the actual little green, little yellow, a little bit of the, I like that um, light color that hits there, that sunlight here. And it has actually a little more orange into it. So I'll put that on. Maybe a bit of the orange color. Again, right through all of this paint. See? I'm just building paint, which builds interest, right? Builds that interest. And I want that sun struck, that real... It's where the sun is hitting, right there. I want that light, nice dab of light hitting paint right in there. And then I'll tap off of that to soften it. And sometimes I'll just tap off like this, which gives you a little bit more rougher texture to what it is that you're painting there. See? Different ways. Let's just pull some of this down. 
there. A little bit of shadow. Boom. Just give some of that. Create that that feeling of surface texture there. There we go. Like that. That looks pretty good. Maybe a, I like that line. Maybe just a touch of it right down here. Leave a spot for the shadow of the knee. And just put that on there. That's pretty good. So it's a little different. And uh, I like that. Okay. So now we come back in and we'll paint other things. But as we paint some of these other things, I'm going to go back to my larger brush for a minute. Okay. And I'm going to set in and it's not going to be perfect what i'm going to do is really a blue and burnt sienna kind of color in here and i'm going to just set in what i think the shape and stuff up here of the saddle is going to be and just kind of push that around we're not going to do anything let's take a little lighter maybe a bit of yellow a bit of burnt sienna just model some of this together we're not going to do anything structurally that uh, is perfect. This is just, we all know a saddle is going to be there. So that's what we're going to create, the impression of the saddle coming in here, the impression of the saddle coming right in there, and some of those colors and stuff. There is a, we'll go more orange right here on the side plane of this one, here on the saddle bag. So we'll just go more orange maybe a bit of the gray coming through it, just to quick touches, see, we don't need that much. More impressionistic, our main elements here are the horse and rider, we got those in, all right? So we got those in, so let's just, and so they're real quick paints here. You know, they'll, we'll pull down, just create some of the ideas of those saddlebags work the, from the bottom up and the top and you can put that front the idea of the you know the top the closure there right there pull down there down onto the side pull a side stroke down that gives so the, the direction of your brush is very important to creating the shape of that element. So watch your brush direction. A little more orange right here. Pulling that side here. You're almost painting like a little box right there, see? But we'll do it a few times. So I'll, I'll, I'll paint like this, just like this a few times until I get the shapes and stuff that I like here and I'll go to a smaller brush too towards the end I'll go to a uh, smaller brush and start doing some of the little details little cast shadows or contact shadows for where it's touching you know where one part here is touching you know lifting up for the top there so I'll do a little contact shadow there which helps, you know, sketch it out, draw it out. A little bottom shadow right down here. That is the bottom of it. Here. Some of the... A little bit of lighter on that edge. Straps, you can do the straps. But keep it simplistic. We don't need, we don't need too much. You can, you know, put on some of the straps and stuff here, but you don't need a whole lot of stuff, so don't spend a whole lot of time. This is accessories to our painting. This isn't the painting. This is just accessories here. So, you know, maybe I'll take some of this gray, the blue and the red, and a little bit of white here, and just swirl this around up here. So this is like his bedroll or a jacket he has rolled up right here. Put on the back. Maybe a little more blue and red. It's darker color. Run some shadow in there. 
And if you notice, I paint quick, because, and I, I, I just think of, sh I just think of shape and color and movement. I don't, I'm not trying to paint anything specific in there. Just, you know, maybe turn it a little bit so it looks like it's rolled up a bit, you know. Um, I, I'm not going to spend a lot of time in there because I don't need to. I used to, you know. I used to go in there and paint folds and do all that stuff, but I noticed a lot of the Western painters don't. They give the impression of it, and the viewer will paint the rest of it, you know. So we'll just give a little bit there. And that's just something there on that. Here, let's clean up this edge a bit. Some of that gray down into this. Some of that gray right down into the area of the saddle. Right down in there. Some green and burnt sienna. Some of your darker, you know, kind of horse colors. Let's just push some of that in there. More burnt sienna. Here, right down in here. Push some of that in there. That just you know, get, you don't. We're not. I'm not going to get that detailed in there. So maybe some yellow, burnt sienna, green. Maybe a touch of white. Just some kind of tan color. Pull a couple marks across. You know, just yeah, just. A little darker green and burnt sienna and a little blue. Darker color right down in here, right where that we're going to put a rope right over here, but we can darken down right up in here, right by his shoe. Lift up. And then you have some, you know, really deep shadows, the blues, the violets and greens that you just kind of drag around, sketch around here you know, that will create some dark, dark contrasts up here. So right up in here, that lifts his shoe off a little bit for the edge of that, sh that sh uh, saddle and stuff here. A little bit right back here that just sets his hip off and drags some of that right up into his hip there so it blurs that that shadow and that line there just a bit, see? And that softens that expression. So, you know, you put something like this in and you'll blur that in like that. So you don't have that. See, when you have a nice, uh, you know, a, a color or contrast of some of these elements here and you just kind of blur them like that, it works so much better. It doesn't have to be perfect sharp lines. That makes it stiff. So blur the line slightly. Here we go. Little cast shadow from that saddlebag there, right? Some of the blanket and stuff that can come right down here, maybe. An idea of it. You can you see me paint other saddle blankets down that have different, you know, colors on them and things. So it's up to you. We can do a lighter kind of tan. I like the red and green and yellow for a nice tan color. Maybe a nice, um, a bit more of a girth strap here. Right down like that. Get sketchy with some of this. Let's push some of this right in here. Get sketchy. There, on that saddle, uh, that bag. See, the more I kind of fuzz it out or I'm not quite perfect with it, the more I like it there on that saddlebag and stuff. I like that. But, you know, there are side panels and, and trim and all that kind of stuff. If you like those kind of details, you can certainly add them. I'm not going to. I'm just going to suggest. So sometimes I'll do just a little sketching on it. And uh, I could go a little lighter, and I probably should make it a little bit lighter overall. So let's do that. Just a little bit lighter. Right like that. There we go. Okay. 
uh, up onto, and you know, a lot of these colors are going to start to get similar. I have kind of a, a brownish gray for like his boot, and you know, most of his boot, the gray, lighter gray, maybe the bottom of his boot, his heel of his boot, would just kind of sketch the, the line of it there, and then we'll paint it sketch the line with some light and then just pull some dark right across it there right like that to kind of suggest it you don't you don't need too much now he has he even has spurs on in the photo i don't think we need to do all that but see you can just do this you can just start sketching a little bit with some light color light tone we can uh, revisit that pants color of his just a little bit of violet here. And uh, right down here like that, push some of that in. And see how I'll, I'll get now sketchy. So a little bit of an edge here for the, the chaps there and his pants. And this is where I really like, I just, just pull it like that, see? I don't need anything more really than that. Maybe a little bit of this light color, light tan, light gray. You can take some blue over here. See this light gray? It's a little different. Constantly make stuff a little bit different. And add some of that to the bottom of his boot there. Okay? And I should point up his boot just a bit more. A little too rounded for being a boot there and a bit here on the heel and a bit of shadow right here to say the line here there we go just like that yeah and so I try to keep it as simplistic with the stroke and stuff as possible simplistic simplistic here and here boom like that okay and then down a little bit of this gray stuff down here. We'll do this stirrup, but we'll have the bottom of his boot. And then you see a um, bit of the tan color. With good tan colors, too, are green, burnt sienna, and yellow. Those are always really nice tan colors. A little tan color for his top of his boot. But again, I work it, um, you know, pretty, uh, pretty quick here. You can use a little dark to just give a little bit of a, a little bit of shape, a little bit lighter right on the bottom here of the, the point of his boot. So you see a little bit of his heel, some of the same color we used on that other one. So you see a little bit of his heel and uh, you know, a little bit of the boot here. And again, Burnt Sienna and blue, nice dark color. Burnt Sienna and blue. Here, we'll make a nice shadow on there. And there's so much going on, just give a, you know, and sometimes I'll just come in and like give a nice little light. And that's the wrong color there, so. A little bit of light, and that suggests the bottom of the boot here. And then the, that's in the stirrup. And the stirrup will, oh, let's go with tan. It's there, more of a tan color, burnt sienna, a little bit of green. There, the stirrup. Maybe a bit of the orangier color into it, but we'll just put the shape of the stirrup in. Sometimes, you know, you can't get all of the definition that you see in a photo, so. Sometimes it's just like, yeah, get some dark in there. 
and to sketch the line and that'll be a that'll be enough maybe a, a little bit of a light edge here to say so you can see the shine edge of it there but sketch it back and forth a few times and um, maybe for the top of it up here a, a horizontal line but some dark draw it sketch I, I do this a lot I sketch it with the dark and then that allows me to really see it and then I'll go from there so a little more burnt sienna blue let's sketch down a few lines holding that and you can just pull down a few lines too so some darks and then some lights pulling down and it'll give the impression that you have this uh, stirrup there see but without painting but you can go in and paint it more specific you know maybe a little of that orange give the the a little bit more pop now once you have that dark on there see and pop that that whole stirrup out a bit more or set some of that shadow in along the edge of his chaps there and it's I try to do it kind of quickly here and set what I need to set and uh, without making it too distracting like I might come in here and say here's the edge of my saddle and if I load the brush up with more of an edge like a bit of paint on the edge I can roll over to the edge and draw it a bit here see and so I say, okay, I, I'll draw it there, and that might be too much, and then I'll paint it out what I don't need, just like that, see? So, boom, like that, so. And let the lines, see that this blurs together there, and that's all it really needs on this particular painting. We don't need to, I don't need to get in there and do a whole bunch of, detail work grab the liner brush and put in a bunch of stuff it doesn't need it on this painting i can use just the the light and dark here to suggest like this is the girth strap here suggest some of the girth strap here right up through there draw a few lines here bring that stirrup strap down up in here a bit more Just a few lines, taps, highlights there. Don't need a lot. Here, I don't need a lot, so. Oh, I like that real light. I think I'm gonna just touch. Here, oh, I think, see what that looks like coming down here, her. Build their face up just a bit more. And this is what I this is really what I like to do. I know I jump around, but I like to jump around and try different things, go work on something else and then come back and then that helps you also visually see um, some of the things that you might want to do different here, you know, working in here. What might you want to do a little different? Jump around a bit. Let's take a little red and some shadowy things. Just draw a few lines in there. She has a beautiful girth strap here. Burnt sienna. A little bit of green to gray that up. Maybe a touch of light here. Let's, uh, I mean, here's the chest strap here. And uh, bring a bit of that right in there. And, you know, again, suggestions of it. And I might here. But, you know, when I paint the suggestions of it like this, I uh, will usually come in and um, do dark, like the shadow side of it. That's what really pops it off. So here I'll take a little blue, a little red, nice... Or, Burnt sienna, nice, nice dark. I'm going to go to a small filbert here, and I'm going to just come in here and draw the contact shadow of that girth strap there. Maybe a little bit through the strap there, just for some interest. But see, it's the contact shadow that really kind of makes it, because all your colors are very close together. So 
you know, make sure you get that contact shadow in there. That uh, the shadow that's cast from the skirt strap into that actually creates a lot of the, you know, the interest of it. And so we can have that contact shadow appear in a few other areas too. And around, you know, maybe it shows up here a little bit of sketchy of this, of this shadow here around and it really, really helps. Here, like right in here on this on this side of the stirrup here, right where his boots coming out. There, it's like using almost a little dark liner to help pop stuff out a little bit. Right up in here, you can set the shape of his boot there a bit more. Lift that off. Here, a little bit marks. That's going good. And uh, yeah, and I'll probably and I'll look for some areas like right in here to fix up some of that shadow here on her. And we have the light gray. light gray so blue and red and some white here a little light gray touch of the ring here for the saddle ring here we've done that before and you've seen me many times put in the uh, the uh, details and stuff on the bridle and stuff we've done a hundred times together so but I'll come back, maybe hit a little highlight. This is all back down now to how much you're going to put in on your, you know, work onto it. Certainly not going to go in there and do tooling, but I'll put a little bit more into the uh, the painting here. Um, and you know, the uh, he has his this tan rope, uh, burnt sienna and green and yellow. And some white here. And I'll just kind of swirl this around and uh, run around like that. Boom. It can come up a little bit higher, but you're going to swirl it quite a few times. So I'll use my little filbert here to swirl it first and put some loose stuff in, you know, just a, a casual bit of it. You can come in and add a few little marks of shadow here. And then I'll go lighter. And you can use a small round, and I used a small round for years, but I do like the edge of a little filbert here. And it, it keeps it a, a little bit more casual as you push that rope in like that. And, uh, boom, just, here's a loop that went a little bit low there. And change the value a couple times, couple times. There, like that, let's give that. And you can stroke back through at any time, a little bit of shadow. If you get too much light, just stroke back through a little bit of shadow there. So that you get that rope, build that rope back and forth a couple times. Here. Boom. Don't breathe. Just swirl. There we go. It gives it a pretty good look on that. And any space that's in between there, just take some dark color, some of this, and just add a little bit of movement here. What is that? We don't know. Just add some movement. Just add a little bit of movement here. 
a little bit of that greenish gray here from this rope maybe comes onto this girth strap a bit there and you can do you know so as I start to refine it a little bit more maybe I add a few little marks and and lights and stuff like that you know just like I do in some of those other areas there a few little marks a few little lights um you know maybe there's a a little bit more and if you if you go back you know like I like to do like I say in here you know come back and visit it again and use a slightly different color this is where you get all your interest really guys I'm gonna lighten this up a bit now let's dry down so I'll lighten up this saddlebag a bit here So I capture the idea of it, not trying to copy it, just I get the idea of it. And uh, a little darker side plane here. We go. See, it's a, ref it's a refining of it. That's what it is, more than anything else. Refining of it. And you can put the uh, straps on. You know, lighter uh, ideas of straps here. Coming right here. And what makes those straps show up more than anything else? What is the most important shadow? The contact shadow. That's what makes them show up, right? That's you see, yeah, so. I'm just going to soften that just a bit. I don't want to get too wild and crazy. I don't, don't normally paint the saddlebags too often because it just it detracts a bit. So, But we're doing them this time. A little more color there. Just keep them kind of soft there. <clears throat> Yeah, so now it's just like, you. okay, you come back in here, and I'll look to clearing up a slightly different color. I know I'm kind of yellowish here. I don't have to be the same color. I'll push some of that in there, cleaning up his chaps a bit here. Just like that. I like that. Um, I lost just a touch on that knee, so we'll push that back. Okay, yeah, and uh, touch more light down this edge here. There, like that. That looks pretty good. So we have some more details. You know, we can do some more, and you can you can take some what I call the the interest strokes to it so you can leave like the stirrups and stuff like that you can leave that color or you can take an interest stroke onto it that slightly different color now see how that just makes it stand out a little bit more gives a little bit more interest to it you can you know take a a bit of that light and just tap around the edge here and create that highlight create a little buckle you can you know you know, on the stirrup there, you can see, so that's all detail that you can do some more, and you'll see me in all the other westerns, you know, I'll show you quite a bit of that, um, you know, how much you're going to do, that's up to you, I will usually come back and do a little bit more, because I like to tap through and create the little shines, just like I do in florals and landscapes, I create those little sparks and stuff, so I like to come through and do that, and I might come up, you know, like that saddlebag is all by itself, and I mean, you know, pretty much one color. So I'll, I'll just come in and add a little bit more here of a, a yellow or something to it to, you know, kick it up a little bit more. I might work the horse back down in here a little bit more. Different kind of gray. I'll work some of the different grays and stuff here. Uh, darker color here. Boom, right here like this on the uh, the horse. Put some of that dark right in here maybe maybe some of that gray maybe a bit of the the uh, 
her color in there, some of the gray. I like that the gray from the the uh, blue and the orange, maybe a touch of green, a little different. You know, this this different kinds of grays you can put you know, a whisper of some of the gray in here on some of her hair and stuff, which is lighter and then darker. So that's just, you know, how much detail and stuff that you do to it, that's all up to you. And I'll show a little bit more of it because I do want to put quite a bit into. But we do want to build up in here. Um, you've seen me paint cows a hundred times and I'm going to be doing them basically the same blocking that in. But I, and I also want to start uh, doing some of the um, detail and stuff up in the grasses. And then I want to paint his face. And so that we don't run completely out of time, what I'm going to do is this, you know, like I've done on other ones, I'll just paint along and start adding some of those grasses like you've seen me do in some of the other westerns. So you'll see some very detailed instructions of the grasses where I'm going to do some horizontals and some strong verticals working in here, putting some of that in here and refining and building up some of this uh, and building it up, building some of this area up, following the same thing, going darks and lights and back through half tones, And um, then, so I'll build that up. I'll show a few minutes of the painting rod, then we'll come back, put in the final details, the bridle and his face and stuff like that. And then we have a Western, okay? So a lot of this is in so many other details and so many other Westerns. I'm going to do about the same, but I'll, I'll just work on that and I'll come back and I'll see you guys in just a minute.
Hi everyone, welcome back. Well, I just finished it up. I, I put, uh, you know, you've seen me do all this before. Just really simple reins that I put in here. And uh, I went through and, and changed this just a little bit, pushed it back just a little bit. I might might do it a little bit more. Um, I did come in there and put the cows, put in a little bit more lighter work on the cows. You saw me uh, use this. You've seen me use this before. Sometimes I use this. Sometimes I use the brush. This is just a very cheap pastry brush, and you take it and you spread it out like this, and then you, you just load it in a little paint and then touch it through. It makes nice little grasses. Sometimes I use that. Sometimes I use the other you know, the other way. I kind of like everything, even though um, she could have a maybe a little bit more modeling color in through here. I like all that. But what I wanted to do here before I run out of time, and I got just a few minutes left on this particular video, I will uh, just show you, uh, just simple. We're going to go in and just do some simple burnt uh, sienna, a little bit of blue, and just some very simple, and I'll set my hand down here, uh, um, features just uh, this the area for the eye here just very simple okay because most of it is going to be here in shadow um, a mark here for what would be the bottom of his nose which would be right up above this V I would probably got to lower this V down just a bit here okay and uh, maybe a mark for back here onto his ear where his ear would be we can Darken in some of the hair. Use some of this to just kind of brush in simple his features there. Now, let's take a little more burnt sienna, which will warm it up, okay? And let's tap up right up by those eye lines right up there. Soften out some of the features. I know it's very hard to see, but I do these features with you, know, these little guys. We want to keep them as simplistic as possible. Let's drop this shadow down, pull this more into that V shape of that shadow that we have on him. Keep everything really soft. You can, I don't like to put like little dots for the eyes, but you can widen out just a bit for the eye. And maybe a, an idea of the hair poking out on that side over there, okay? But the big thing is you touch that in and then you soften it with some burnt sienna and then over here, burnt sienna and just a little bit of light. Now, sometimes on the features, sometimes on the smaller features, you see me put in a little bit of red. It's just like in a portrait where you warm the cheek area. If you have room, this is really small, so you don't really have to do this. Just a little bit in there. And I'll put a mark in, and then I'll go back. Everything goes back to my burnt sienna, and I soften into that burnt sienna, blur the edges, blur, blur the lines. Very simplistic here. And tap into it, stuff there, okay. And uh, then a little bit of burnt sienna, maybe a touch of the dark, just kind of modeled. You're gonna put in basically the lower, the shadow underneath the lower lip when you look at him and then, now it's very small, but you just tap in a line for the upper lip and again go back to a light flesh burnt sienna a little red a little yellow a little white i'll just grab something that's over here put it softly into my brush and paint into it tap into it try to blur it a little bit so it's not perfect you know and you don't need anything like super perfect you don't want to make a harsh line for his um for his chin or anything like that you know and it it's something that i learned in portraits why i love to paint portraits is that you know the the edge of this uh and my daughter was just finishing up a, a professional portrait class out in, in philadelphia and she told me this too and which i had i'd heard so many times that you you don't put a harsh line for like the the edge of the jawline or something like that that's all done with shadow Okay, so just think everything on this feature. Try not to do it with light. You're doing it very simplistically. Try not to do it with uh, um, lines. Try to do it with light and shadow. That's what makes a nice, a nice little guy. So we'll just tap right into some of that, right down for a, an idea of a nose. And 
Then I can sit back and shadow him back a little bit more and play a little bit, but I don't play too long because he's really simplistic here. You know, he's just a very simplistic guy. And um, yeah, get some of that warmth, travel some of that warm reddish tone and, you know, restate your lights. There'll be a nice soft little light right in here, restate that. And like all things, you know, if you don't do portraits and stuff all the time, and I don't, so I end up having to play with them just a bit till I get that, uh, you know, till I get that shape that I like on there. And I think I'm going to widen out this line here. But I like to tap. Now, the other thing to remember as you're working on that, and I can put some more light down at that bottom. I see that. But I, the thing is, I start to see him coming. And, you know, I, I don't have him perfect yet, but I start to see him coming. And that's when I start to lighten the pressure on my brush, start to do just little simplistic things here. And... Um, and this is, what I'm using here is a, a number two filbert. And it, it's, I don't like, a lot of people say, why don't you use a round? I don't always like to use a round because the round would make a perfect line. Does that make sense? A perfect dot. And I want these features to be blurred here. So, you know, I don't, I don't use that. So I'll, uh, I'll just blur into him a little bit there. Anyway, I'll do that a little bit more. There'll be a nice shadow line and one of the important ones is down this side of the face this thins out his face then put that shadow line that's the neck going up right there and then we have some of the uh, blue burnt sienna some grays here um colors let's get a little more burnt sienna into that some of these light grays and stuff that is his scarf that are going to come right along here and uh, we'll push some of that in and those colors here just a, a, you know rounding little mark of it try uh, try doing it with small taps of the brush as opposed to uh, you know big long strokes and you know push that around try to be simplistic and so I'll push some of that in and then I always, always come back towards with the face color and push that down in with that as well. So you get a little scarf in there. Here, let's just, yeah, just mar a few little marks, light, light hit marks and stuff like that there. And uh, that might be too much, but I'll take that down. And then what is it when, What is it that really makes it when you're doing something like this? It's the drawing. It's the shadow, right? Remember what I said earlier, the contact shadow. So I make a dark, kind of a darkish kind of shadow. And that's what really does a lot of my, my work for me here is the shadow. See that shadow line that comes in? And I'll look. Yeah, that shadow can come down through here, here. And basically that shadow, you know, paints out a lot of what I don't do, but I it really sets the whole features here for for the whole work. It really does a lot of the the work of the drawing work, you know, for uh, your painting here. Light and shadow, right? Light and shadow. So yeah. And I might put out a bit more light on the uh his shirt and stuff here. Bring that up to the front a little bit more. You know, just small little marks there and um, the edges. And I'm going to grab a new little, this is a new little two, uh, two flat. And sometimes I'll just use that to just tap in that, that mouth a little bit more right there. You know, so... So I'll lighten up his face, lighten up that mouth just a little bit more. I want him very, very simplistic, though. But that gives you kind of an idea. Keep everything simplistic and blurred back through here. Big grasses, let it all fade away going back through there. And, uh, you know, I'll probably just bring this up a bit more here. 
you know, look at your stirrups, all that kind of, you know, how much more architecture do you want to do? But I'm going to keep him mostly pretty soft. I might put a little more light gray. I'll put a finished photo of everything into the, uh, um, into the, the, uh, uh, membership area there on the community page i just just hit that if you remember go over there i'll put a finished photo i'll put my reference photo over there for you so you can look at that and uh hopefully give him a you know painting because he's a lot of fun he's a lot of fun to try so i painted him let's see it's been so we got about three four maybe maybe four and a half hours into the total painting time of this so that's not too bad four and a half hours for a, a nice little western like this okay so i hope you enjoyed it and we'll move over to other things those of you that have not gone over yet go over to our painted simply channel on our main channel page you'll see some of the other channels painted simply those of you that are really like a lot of flowers and stuff like that go over and subscribe to the painted simply channel it's all free but we are now adding videos over to that particular channel and that is where i'm going to be painting more limited palette and i'm going to do a lot of beginner videos and a lot of brush ups and and um you know ways in which you can correct and improve some of your skills okay skill building things but we'll do a lot of florals over there too okay all right thanks very much guys and uh have fun with him let me know leave a comment don't forget to subscribe to the channel click that little bell so you know when we release a video okay all right and uh if you just want to say hey dave great painting don't forget to add that comment okay all right thank you everyone and i'll see you on the next one